Good evening, folks, and thank you for tuning in to another season of Game Time Situation. This is Chip Whipple, and I'm Brian Vale, and this is the season premiere of our show. Chip, why don't you break things down for the viewers at home? Thanks, Brian. Here on Game Time, we'll have the latest scores and stats for each and every team on campus. We'll also have highlights and plenty of other action here on the show. That's right, Chip. We'll also have the Game Time Spotlight, our interview segment with an AU athlete, where Tyler Miller will bring the heat for a surprise guest each program. Sounds like a good time. Well, and you know how season premieres always have those, they're jam-packed with like plot twists and new characters and the return of those recurring cast members you've always loved? Yeah. We've got all that and more right here, right now, on the season premiere. With so much to cover, we better get started. Oh dear. You're right. What time is it? It's, it's game, game time. time. Who? Consistency is a mark of a good football team. If a team can play at a high level for long periods of time, they should be in for a good season. Unfortunately for Ashland's football team, consistency has been an issue. They went to Saginaw Valley and won 32-27, their first win in Saginaw since 1990. A trip to Hillsdale saw the Eagles lose 49-28 the next week, though, as AU was down 42-7 in the second half. The Chargers passed for 426 yards in the win. This past Saturday, Ashland hosted 23rd-ranked Northwood at Community Stadium. The Eagles jumped out to an early lead and never let up, winning 54 to 24. AU had 587 yards of total offense, including 389 through the air by quarterback Billy Cundiff. Ashton scored seven rushing touchdowns, set in a new school record, and John Schroeder tied a career high with four scores. Receivers Brandon Gilmore and David Ziegelhofer both had career days for the Eagles. Gilmore had eight catches for 162 yards, while Ziegelhofer had seven grabs for 164. The 54 points were the most for an Eagle team in nine years, and the yardage was the most since 1994. AU converted all seven trips to the red zone, scoring touchdowns each time. Cundiff's 389, pa 389 passing yards were the most by an AU quarterback in 13 years, allowing him to win GLIAC Offensive Player of the Week. With the win, Ashland improved to 2-1 on the year, with Northwood falling to 2-2 in 2007. AU now travels to Mercyhurst this Saturday for a 1:30 kickoff with the Lakers. Now, now, Brian, it's not just the football team that's having a good time this year. The volleyball team finished last season losing in the Elite Eight of the National Championship Pretty Tournament. Good. Let's just say they aren't looking to have a setback this year. Now, the team has already played 17 matches, but I'll do my best to give you an update on all of them. The Eagles started their season out winning three of their four, four matches, including a revenge victory over North Alabama, who just happened to knock them out of the NCAA Tournament last year. Ashland then won eight straight matches before opening GLIAC play two weeks ago. The Eagles opened at home against Gannon and easily handled the Golden Knights 30-23, 30-22, and 30-18. Senior Mary Kay Glow led the team with 16 kills. In their next match, Ashland beat up on Mercyhurst 30-24, 30-23, and 30-18. Last Tuesday, the Eagles traveled to in-state rival Finley and continued their winning streak with a 24-30, 30-22, 30-15, 30-19 victory. This past weekend, the team faced one of their toughest challenges of the season, traveling to play defending GLIAC South champion Hillsdale College. Unfortunately, the Hillsdale Chargers earned a hard fought 30-24, 16-30, 30-24, 30-32, 15-15, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 15-19, 
but it is good to have dinner with your kids. We know the more often children have dinner with their families, the less likely they are to smoke, drink, and use drugs. So simply having dinner together can help your children forever, even if you're not a great cook. Every trip, every time. California, here I come! Buckle up so you and your friends get home safely. Yeah! I must scream into the world from the top of some place very high. Seatbelts save lives. Okay. Visit NHTSA.gov. Low and slow. <laughs> Best friend, what are you going to do? Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. That is spectacular advice. My name's Andy McDonald. I ride this useless wooden toy for a living. It's hard. I've been doing it for 13 years. I'm still lame. I do a trick called a 540. It took me a good six years to learn. There's a whole generation of skateboarders out there that are just as talented athletically as any basketball or football player. It takes somebody that's not going to be afraid to fall down a lot because you definitely will fall down. You're not a failure until you refuse to get back up. Drugs are only going to hinder what I'm trying to do. That right there is my idea of getting high. You're a good driver, a careful driver, and you don't stand a chance. Not at a railroad crossing with bad sight lines and no lights or gates, where vegetation, buildings, or hills block your view, where you can't see the train, and you only have seconds before it hits your safe, careful self, and you die. Go to angelsontrack.org to report dangerous crossings, because careful is just no match for a 200-ton locomotive. We're back. When looking at the fall sports teams in action here on AU's campus, there's one team that jumps out as a surprise. The tennis team here at AU won their first seven matches of the 2007 season, including three GLIAC competitions. The Lady Eagles won 12 matches all of last season, the most in school history. However, few expected the team to leap to the top of the conference this season, but wins at Lake Superior State and Michigan Tech to start the year put the league on notice. Two more victories, followed by a defense of their Wilmington Invitational title from 2006, showed that the team was ready to play. Next, AU beat Ferris State to run their record to 7-0, including 3-0 in the conference. GLIAC power Grand Valley State was next on the docket this past weekend, though, and the Lakers made sure Ashland knew where it stood. Grand Valley won 9-0, handing Ashland their first loss of the season. Despite the loss, expectations remain high for the team. Several new freshmen have given the Lady Eagles unprecedented depth on this tennis team. Freshman Myra Pepino, playing as the number one singles player, is 5-3 on the year. Morgan Sanders and Megan Stahl are both 7-1 in singles competition, and the doubles team of Chelsea Guerin and Krista Halicki has gone 6-1 in 2007. AU played last night at Clarion before hosting two conference matches this weekend. The women's soccer team came into this season looking to improve on their record from last season. So far, the team is at a record of 3-4-1, but earned a much-needed victory over Lake last week over St. Joseph's. Coming into the match, the Eagles hadn't won a game in 20 days. The team scored early and often as they handled the Pumas 4-0. Big win. <laughs> Sophomore Casey Snyder started the scoring with her fifth goal of the year in the first 20 minutes of the match. Not to be outdone, sophomore Kelly Usher followed up with her own fifth goal of the season 30 minutes later. The Eagles added two goals later in the match to finish up the scoring. Asher was actually playing right now Live against action. Davis and Elkins, or perhaps they might have already finished by now. But we're sad to say we do not have that updated score in front of us. But the Eagles will play at home this weekend against Fair State and Grand Valley State. The men's soccer team has not been as fortunate as the women as they are still in search of their first win of the season. The Eagles struggled to score early in the season as they had just one goal in their first three games. Since then, the team has scored at least a goal in each game, but they've allowed 21 goals in those five games. They lost to Mercier's 4-1 Sunday at the AU Soccer Complex. So soccer complex. Zach Giavone scored the Eagles' lone goal in the contest. Senior Albert Smith leads the team with three goals scored, while sophomore Max Hiltner has assisted on two scores. Now we're going to go from English football back to the AU football team, as the football team is off to that 2-1 and one start that, uh, tra that Vale talked about earlier. And a big reason for that has been the defensive tackle Jake Grove. Grove, a senior captain from Shelby, Ohio, has faced some tough competition from GLIAC offensive lines. However, has he ever seen anything like Tyler Miller in the game time spotlight?
Thanks, guys. Back here on the Game Time Spotlight with Eagle senior defensive lineman Jake Grove. Jake, let's go right off the top from last week. Good win against Northwood. You guys played well and got a big 54-24 win. Yeah, um, you know, we it, it started with a good week of preparation. Uh, we worked hard all week. And, uh, uh, you know, they're a type of team where it takes a lot of discipline because they run the option, and we were very disciplined as it showed. Looked good out there on that with, the again, the 54-24 win over Northwood. Jake, you've been here. This is your fifth year, fifth year senior. Been here for the entire Coach Owens campaign. Talk a little bit about your coach and just how you've seen him progress from day one to where you guys are right now. Uh, well, really, the progression has been nothing but great. Uh, he's he's always been upbeat and spirited. Uh, there really hasn't been any change as far as uh, you know what he's looking for. He's always preached hard work, dedication, and we've always had to be held accountable for our actions and uh, for our team as well. What about this year's season with the uh, this year's edition of the Ashland University Eagles? You guys right now are two and one. What are your goals looking forward for the rest of the season? Obviously, it's to win the rest from here on out. Uh, if we if we win the rest, we know we have a chance to make the playoffs, even though we had a, a tough loss to Hillsdale. But we're just going to take it one week at a time and uh, starting with Mercy Harris next week. Kind of a different situation with the Grand Valley game. It was supposed to be the home opener. It was the night game. Everything set up for a real good football game, and then you have the lightning and, and the game canceled. What, was that a disappointment for you guys? I know Coach Owens was saying it left him with an empty feeling in his stomach. How did the players feel about that game being canceled? We really didn't know how to feel. We felt as if you know, we won, but we lost, but we lost, but we won. It was a, it was a mixed emotion. Um, and, you know, we, we had a chance to play uh, when they voted the teams at the beginning of the season to finish, how they finished. Grand Valley was one, Saginaw was two, and Northwood was three. And so far, we've beaten Saginaw and Northwood and didn't get a chance to play Grand Valley. So it's kind of disappointing. Kind of disappointing there, but, you know, you still didn't get the loss and you walked away from that still on a winning streak as far as the season was going. But now two and one. We look forward to Mercyhurst. Anything that you can preview for us as uh, you guys are on the road this weekend? Uh, it's just going to be a hard fault game. Uh, we'll be ready to play, though. All right, well, we'll look forward to that. Jake Grove, you are officially off the Game Time Spotlight. Thanks. We'll have more Game Time situation coming up in just a moment, but right now we'll take a break and be back right here on TV2. When will the next natural disaster hit? A public health crisis strike? Another terrorist threat emerge? How long will it take for help to arrive? Ohio Citizen Corps is committed to making every minute count by having volunteers ready. Physicians, nurses, teachers, retirees, everyone can help. You can make a difference. Join Ohio Citizen Corps. Call or go to serveohio.org. The time to prepare for trouble is before it hits. E-file. Get receipt confirmation and a quicker refund. Log on or tell your tax preparer to e-file for you and join the 53 million e-filers who consider it done. Ashland Theological Seminary. Transforming the world. One pastor. One counselor. One city. One campus. One village. One family. One teacher. One crisis. One missionary. One shelter. One church. Transforming the world, one student at a time. Kids, how do we take care of our teeth? Brush your teeth. Twice a day. Floss your teeth. Once a day. If you want healthy teeth, do this I made it this way. And we're back. Brian, you know what I did a lot this summer? What'd you do, Chip? Uh, I did a lot of golfing this Got summer. Got out on the links, huh, Chip? 
But you know what I seem to notice? What's I'm that? not quite as good as the players on the AU golf team. Are you is. as good as anyone? I, I think I'm better than, say, Tyler Miller from the spotlight. Ah. But after I got a 10 on the first hole, I decided it would just be best for everyone if I just stopped. And, but there's good news. There are some other students here at AU who seem to have a pretty good grasp on the game. That's nice. The golf team started off slow, taking fifth at the Northwood Invitational, with sophomore Chris Benson and senior Chris Robertson finishing in the top 10. At Ferris State the following week, the Eagles finished in second out of 12 teams, with Robertson and junior Danny Evans finishing in a tie for fifth place, shooting a 143 overall. Unfortunately, Ashland suffered a slight setback, finishing eighth at Grand Valley State Invitational the following day. The Eagles then did something that no other Ashland men's golf team has done in their history. On Monday, the golf team won their first regional tournament. It was one of the three that will be held this season to determine what teams will make the NCAA tournament. Freshman John Furlong led the Eagles, taking first place overall in the tournament with a second day 65. I'm lucky if I shoot a 65 on 9 and he did it on 18. I'm lucky to shoot 65 on (laughs) 6. The team will next travel to Saginaw Valley State Invitational this weekend. The men seem to be doing pretty well. How have the women been doing, Brian? Well, Chip, it's time to pull out that driver. and Oh, there it goes. Way off in the distance. Oh, it's right there. The women's (laughs) golf season also in full swing as AU played at the Mercyhurst Invitational this past weekend, winning the event. So the men aren't the only winners of this game. Annie Miles took first in the tournament. Her 150 was good enough to win by five strokes over teammate Christine Suki, who tied for second place. At the Ferris State Invitational, the Lady Eagles placed 10th out of 18 teams. Miles finished 23rd best on AU, shooting a 161 in the two-day event. Janice Greenblatt shot 163, good for 28th. Ferris State won that event, and on September 3rd, the team competed in the Laker Classic at Grand Valley State. The Lady Eagles took 12th in the 17-team field, as Miles shot a 158, placing 18th in the tournament. Grand Valley, surprise, surprise, won first place in that tournament. Well, Brian, the women's cross-country team has enjoyed a good run of their own. Get it? Run? I'll explain it to you later. The Eagles started off slowly with a 12th place finish at at the Bowling Green Invitational with junior Becky Yoder posting an AU best time of 1836. The team rebounded well at the Wooster Invitational, taking third place. Yoder finished sixth overall with a time of 1955. Freshman Leah Allen was 13th with a time of 20.33, and sophomore Amanda McConnell finished 14th with a time of 20.41. The team will next run over to the All-Ohio Championships and Ohio Westland on October 5th, looking to add to their success. It's funny because they run. The men's cross-country team won the Worcester Invitational last weekend as the Eagles filled second to fourth place in the event. Brandon Bauer took second, Jeremy Train third, and Nick McQuillan placed fourth. AU won the team event, beating second place Case Western by 20 points. The team got their season underway August 31st at the Kent State Relays as Bauer led the way with a ninth place finish. Eagles were in action September 15th at the Mel Brote Invitational. The event was held at Bowling Green. Jeremy Train placed 12th with Brandon Bauer finishing 13th. AU will head to the All-Ohio Championships October 5th at Ohio Wesleyan for their next meet. All right, folks. Up to this point in the, in the show, we've talked about sports specific to Ashland's campus, mm-hmm. and now we're going to broaden the spectrum a little bit and go national. We don't, just, really we don't just focus here in Ashland. No, we're going to go to the north, to Cleveland. To Canada? Yes. We're going, we're going to, Canada? to Canada. The Blue Jays to the playoffs. No, we're going to talk about the Browns and the Indians and how they're going to do in the rest of 2007. So, Chip. The Browns, the over-under is set at six wins. What do you got? They're going to win more than six? They're going to win fewer than six? Or are they going to win exactly six? Six would be I the would, best record in I, Romeo Cornell. Six wins is the most Romeo Cornell I'm a have. huge Browns fan, but there's no possible way that I can say they're going to win more than six games. They're playing the NFC West this year. The NFC West stinks. The, the Cardinals, the 49ers, the Rams. The Rams can't score on anybody. The Seahawks just beat the Bengals. That's the Seahawks. they got to play the other three teams. He's got to play the Seahawks once. I just, they're not going to beat the Steelers. Okay. I doubt they're going to beat the Ravens either of the two right. times. They're not going to beat Cincinnati in Cincinnati. Oh, so they win one they over have Cincinnati, Cincinnati and he has got, well, he got no faith. You got the home 
field advantage. Ah, the dog pound. And they got to travel to New England. They'll okay. be lucky to score in that matchup. All right, so they got to play Buffalo, who's no good. Buffalo's they play a the, sleeper team. Oh, that nobody's they're looking sleep. out. For. Yeah, they're asleep. Is all right. The Jets aren't. The Jets aren't anything special. And then you look at the Dolphins. So, so you seriously, you're going to say they're on over. TV right now they're going to the win. The Cleveland Browns will win more than six games this season. They won't win more than eight, but they'll win seven. So they're going or with seven. They're seven, finishing seven and nine. They'll finish seven and nine or eight and eight on the year. Not good enough to make the playoffs, but Romeo Cornell's best season to date. Does he keep his job? Yes, he keeps his job. He's going to have a new quarterback next season in Brady Quinn. And uh, so you got six, and, you got five and eleven again. D- Here's another question I got for you. What do you got? Is Brady coming in at some point during the season? Yes, he will come in at some point during the season because Derek Anderson's little bag of tricks. I don't know what he's got going on for him right now. It's going to run out rather quickly. You think he's going to play? I. I think he's coming in after the bye week because they're not going to put him in against New England. But I'm still I'm shell shocked here, folks. Brian Vale, Mister dislikes all of Cleveland. If you're around the Cleveland area, he doesn't like you. Is <laughs> <laughs> picking the Browns to win more than six games. This Seven is unbelievable. Games. Seven wins. Big big season for Romeo Cornell and the Browns. All right, now a team that has had a little bit more success in 2007, the Cleveland Indians. The over-under is set at three playoff wins. Which would be one series. Which would be the first round, get them to the ALCS. Are what they do you go got? Over or under? What I'm going to go over. They're going to win the ALCS, or the LDS, excuse me, at least, and maybe win the ALCS. They're going to play the Yankees or the Red Sox. I think they're going to play the Yankees, and they'll go and beat the Yankees in five games as CC five. and Fausto. Five. Five games. CC, Fausto, and then whoever you want, Bird, West, Westbrook. And then they'll go CC Fausto again, and the Yankees will beat them once, but CC will win two, and Fausto will win one, and that'll be enough to get them to the ALDS. What about your boy Roger Clemens? LCS, excuse me. What about my boy Roger Clemens? He's not going to shut down the tribe. He can offense. shut down whoever he wants against Paul Bird in game three. They got Andy Pettit and Ching Ming Wong in games one and two. So you're thinking, you're thinking they're gonna, over. They're going to they're win more than three games in the playoffs. I'm going that they're going to win under. <laughs> once they're again, losing in the first round. Big Cleveland sports fan. No faith in Eric Wedge. I think they're just not going to get it done. He's going he's gonna to pull a Grady Little in the ALDS and leave Carmona in there too long, and Carmona's going to get beat up in one of those games, and it'll just shell-shock him the rest of the series. I just don't think it's gonna, they're going to be able to pull it out. Their offense is too streaky. They're going to get into a funk, and their pitching isn't going to be enough to save them because they'll give up two runs, and they won't score one. But at the Jake, they'll have CC and Carmona going. Mm-hmm. At the Jake in games one and two, you're going to say they're going to lose one of those games? I'm saying that Eric Wedge will leave <laughs> Carmona in for too long. Okay. He's pulling a Grady Little right here, folks. They're going to compare Eric Wedge with Grady Little for leaving Carmona in too long when his bullpen of Perez and Betancourt were ready to shut down the rest of the Yankees or Red Sox lineup. I think the Indians will go to the ALCS, and then we'll see from there how they do against the Red Sox or Angels or if it's the Yankees that they do play. But they will get to the ALCS. Chip says first-round exit for the Indians. It'll be close. It'll be five. In 2000. It'll be five. So they're going to win two games. Two, yes. I'm taking the under. They're going to win two and take the under. All right. That's all we got for the Cleveland portion of this show. So that went by pretty quickly, and here we are. It's that time again. What time's that? It's game time. Uh, uh, oh. um, well, actually, no, no, it's not. It's. Uh, it's. I think it's time to go. No, it's not. It yeah, can't I be think time it's to that go. time. Oh dear, that's tough. But um, we'll be back soon enough, right? That's right. We'll be back here in o- two October weeks, 10th. October tenth. I'll be here along with my buddy here, Brian. We're gonna have stats, scores, highlights, all kinds of things going on on the next edition of Game Time Situation, along with. The Game Time Spotlight. Of course, the Game Time Spotlight. Wednesday, October 10th at 6 p.m. on TV2. Be sure to check it out and get to a few AU games. And thanks for joining us tonight, folks, on the season premiere of Game Time Situation. Have a good night. Enjoy your evening.